India. I said the time that I go, and that's how I retired from service. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Uh, I would be very brief. First, I would introduce myself about how I uh, sort of my connection with uh, Jammu and Kashmir. So I was home secretary between 1994 to 97, over three years, three years and six months. At that time, there was no department of Jammu Kashmir. It used to be looked after by the Home Ministry. But the Home Minister and the Deputy Home Minister, the Minister of State, had their own differences about Kashmir. One would say something, the other would oppose it. So that's how it was going on, you know. So then the Prime Minister, Sir Narasimharavar, he decided that uh, we should have a separate department of Jammu and Kashmir Affairs. And then it would be directly under me, means under the Prime Minister. And he said, but you would also be the Secretary for Jammu Kashmir Affairs. So there was a separate department of Jammu Kashmir Affairs, and I was the Secretary there for about three and a half years. So this is my association with that. 94, 97 was at the peak of insurgency. 94, 95 was the peak of insurgency. And so our immediate job was to see that the insurgency is sort of brought down the extent possible. And uh, Lieutenant General Zaki was there as advisor at that time. So we worked together. And uh, so that is my introduction. Now, coming to the topic, I would like to make three points. One is this abolition of 317. Uh, is it good? Is it bad? Is it necessary? And all that. I would, I would be very, very brief on that. The second is yes, we have done it. And uh, the point is, where are the dangers that are lurking? What are the possible dangers? And three, what should we do to counter them? These are the three points I want to touch. The first one, I think this decision was taken at the right time. And the boldest decision I have known in my entire presidential career. And it was absolutely necessary at that point of time. I will tell you why. Even though I was there for three and a half years, but I continued my association with Kashmir. I have been going there quite often and following whatever is happening. The story is, whenever I think of Kashmir, it is like a uh, train to nowhere. You have taken the train, the train would go sometimes fast, sometimes slow, sometimes back, sometimes front, sometimes halting. That's all. So it was not going anywhere. There was no destination. So that's what was happening in Kashmir. It was a tamasha for people who were there. It was a tamasha because they say, what were the solutions that were offered? You talk to the people. Which people? All the people, elected people, are there in the assembly. So you talk to the assembly people, so there is no problem. But no, you talk to Huriyat. Who are these Huriyat fellows? There are about six, seven people. Each one has got his influence in a set of three, four villages, nothing beyond that. Not even one constituency but they are the great leaders of the movement, so you have to talk to them. Or you talk to the terrorists, the militants. Most of them are inspired by Pakistan. Or inside, you know, you have to talk to these people. So what would you talk? And these uh, Guryat chairs are on the pay of Pakistan. I am directly telling you from the ISI. Where would they take the money? They would come to Delhi, at the time of Pakistan's Independence Day, go to the Pakistan Embassy and take the, carry the bags back. Everybody knew it. But then nothing could be done. And then they were also carrying the bags from Indian side also. The India also was paying them. So they were getting the money from Pakistan side, they were getting money from the Indian side also. And uh, they are put there by Pakistan. So what would you talk? They have been saying Azadi, Azadi and then uh, all those things, you know. So the train was not going any. The second solution what uh, the government thought till then is, we must talk to Pakistan. What do you talk to Pakistan? Would you tell them that uh, you vacate the Pakistan occupied Kashmir and give it back to us? No, they would not do that. Would you tell them, don't attack us, I mean, don't keep on sending these things. You withdraw your uh, terrorist fellows whom you are sending, this policy of thousand cuts. You know, India should bleed, and not cut the throat, but you strike them at a thousand places so that it would bleed to death. That was their policy. So would they stop it by talking to them? 
So there is no question of talks. That's why the talks have started. Something happens, you stop it. Some, again, somebody says, no, 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 we must talk at the secretary level, at the foreign minister level, at the prime minister level. This is a tamasha. It was just going on. We were not going anywhere. And second thing, this 370 article, what it has done is, I'm not going into history, it has bred a sense of separatism. It has increased the sense of separatism totally in the people. And everyone, the leaders there began behaving as if it is their son star. It is their own place, you know. And in the 72 years of, 71 years of Kashmir's history, there are only about seven families which have ruled that. Sheikh Abdullah, Farooq Abdullah, and Nohar Abdullah ruled for 30 years. 30. Then, Bakshi Ghulam Muhammad ruled for 10 years. Then their own relations, you know, Abu <coughs> Shah and somebody else, you know, ruled for a uh, few more years. Congress of uh, PDP, <coughs> Mufti and his daughter for six years. Congress for about eight years. And then President ruled for about eight years. I have accounted for 69 years. So only these people, they ruled it as if it is their fifth level, kingdom, you know. And not the people, the politicians, people in power, you know. And uh, so, but uh, the Jammu and Kashmir is not a poor state. In fact, there is no begging in anywhere there. The, if you calculate the, uh, this one, per capita income, it comes quite high, around 70,000 rupees uh, a year. But that is only a calculation. Because you take the gross domestic product of the state, divide by the population, so you say per, uh, per capita it is about 70,000 rupees, 69,000 rupees. But it doesn't go to them, it goes into the pockets of uh, most of these fellows. The rulers and the Guriyat and uh, you know, these type of uh, leaders. So, then, I mean, in this type of this one, it would go on for 50 years, 100 years, 150 years, nothing would happen. So nobody in the government also taken Kashmir seriously because what is the solution? There is no solution. So I think uh, this, uh, this step taken is extremely <coughs> sort of uh, relevant. And I would also tell you then, Zamat e Islam, there is a body there. And most of the teachers there have gone from UP, or only this one. And they spread such poison in the uh, sort of schools and all that, the separatist this one. So completely, right from the beginning, the children have been fed into that particular one. Then, on any pretext, they would go on strike. They would completely bring it to a halt. And uh, it's not only the politicians, as somebody made a mention about the bureaucrats. I would tell you two instances of bureaucrats. One of the chief secretaries, one I can name, Mr. Tayabji, what he did was, when uh, Amarnath Yatra was going on, there was a ter terrorist threat. They said, no, we would not allow it to happen in one particular year, 95, I think. He came in, and I was directly responsible for Kashmir because it was in the president's rule. So it was directly Delhi was dealing with that. He came and said, sir, we should cancel the Amarnath Yatra. We cannot hold it because of this. I said, are you mad? I said, Amarnath Yatra people come from Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Bengal, Maharashtra. What message are we going to give them by saying that uh, this uh, trip should be cancelled? Then he said, uh, I am not responsible if something happens, so you handle it. This is the type of answers they gave. There was another chief secretary, I mean, they look like stories, who wrote to the United Nations organization complaining against the government of India about violation of human rights. The chief secretary of the state, a gentleman called Ashok Jetli. And then we could do nothing. Because of that sense of separateness, and we are a separate uh, entity altogether, has gone down with the bureaucracy also. So that was the type of thing. So I think what has been done is absolutely right, and there's no doubt about it. So there's no more justification that is required as to uh, why it has been done and all that. Yes, there are problems. There will be sort of uh, it's a major decision, and so there will be some repercussions. Now, where is the danger likely to come? You don't have to take the threats of Pakistan seriously at all. 
are they saying that uh, human rights violations, this, that, and all that? Because the violations they have done are about 100 times worse than what uh, could have happened here. For example, the entire pundits, this one has been driven out from there. And then, uh, you know, the arms caught, Mr. Saki would uh, bear with me, the terrorists, from the terrorist organizations, the amount of arms uh, captured by our Indian forces could uh, equip one division of the Indian army. Huh? Mountains of arms, you know, arms, sophisticated equipment, communication equipment, rocket launchers, you say anything, you know.